Chapter 9 of Ozma of Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Ozma of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Chapter 9 The Royal Family of Ev. The Tin Woodman was the first to address the meeting. <clears throat> to begin with, said he, word came to our noble and illustrious ruler, Ozma of Oz, that the wife and ten children, five boys and five girls, of the former king of Ev, by name Evoldo, have been enslaved by the gnome king, and are held prisoners in his underground palace. Also that there was no one in Ev powerful enough to release them. Naturally, our Ozma wished to undertake the adventure of liberating the poor prisoners, but for a long time she could find no way to cross the great desert between the two countries. Finally, she went to a friendly sorceress of our land named Glinda the Good, who heard the story and at once presented Ozma with the magic carpet, which would continually unroll beneath our feet and so make a comfortable path for us to cross the desert. As soon as she had received the carpet, our gracious ruler ordered me to assemble our army, which I did. You behold in these bold warriors the pick of all the finest soldiers of Oz, and if we are obliged to fight the gnome king, every officer, as well as the private, will battle fiercely unto death. Then Tick-Tock spoke. Why should you fight the Gnome King? He asked. He has done no wrong. No wrong? cried Dorothy. Isn't it wrong to imprison a queen mother and her ten children? They were sold to the Gnome King by King Evaldo, replied Tick-Tock. It was the king of Ev who did wrong, and when he realized what he had done, he jumped into the sea and drowned himself. This is news to me, said Ozma thoughtfully. I had supposed the gnome king was all to blame in the matter, but in any case he must be made to liberate the prisoners. My uncle Evoldo was a very wicked man, declared the princess Langwider. If he had drowned himself before he sold his family, no one would have cared. But he sold them to the powerful Gnome King in exchange for a long life, and afterward destroyed the life by jumping into the sea. Then, said Ozma, he did not get the long life, and the Gnome King must give up the prisoners. Where are they confined? No one knows exactly, replied the princess. For the king, whose name is Roquat of the Rocks, owns a splendid palace underneath the great mountain, which is at the north end of this kingdom, and he has transformed the queen and her children into ornaments and bric-a-brac, with which to decorate his rooms. "'I'd like to know,' said Dorothy, "'who this gnome king is.' "'I will tell you,' replied Ozma. "'He is said to be the ruler of the underground world, and commands the rocks and all that the rocks contain.' Under his rule are many thousands of the gnomes, who are queerly shaped but powerful sprites that labor at the furnaces and forges of their king, making gold and silver and other metals which they conceal in the crevices of the rocks, so that those living upon the earth's surface can only find them with great difficulty. Also they make diamonds and rubies and emeralds, which they hide in the ground, so that the kingdom of the gnomes is wonderfully rich, and all we have of precious stones and silver and gold is what we take from the earth and the rocks where the gnome king has hidden them. I understand, said Dorothy, nodding her little head wisely. For the reason that we often steal his treasures, 
continued Ozma. The ruler of the underground world is not fond of those who live upon the Earth's surface, and never appears among us. If we wish to see King Rokhead of the Rocks, we must visit his own country, where he is all-powerful, and therefore it will be a dangerous undertaking. But for the sake of the poor prisoners, said Dorothy, we ought to do it. We shall do it, replied the Scarecrow. Although it requires a lot of courage for me to go near to the furnaces of the Gnome King, for I am only stuffed with straw, and a single spark of fire might destroy me entirely. The furnaces may also melt my tin, said the Tin Woodman. But I am going. I can't bear heat, remarked the Princess Langwider, yawning lazily. So I shall stay at home. But I wish you may have success in your undertaking, for I am heartily tired of ruling this stupid kingdom, and I need more leisure in which to admire my beautiful heads. We do not need you, said Ozma, for if with the aid of my brave followers I cannot accomplish my purpose, then it would be useless for you to undertake the journey. Quite true, sighed the princess. So, if you will excuse me, I shall now retire to my cabinet. I've worn this head quite a while, and I want to change it for another. When she had left them, and you may be sure no one was sorry to see her go, Ozma said to Tick-Tock, Will you join our party? I am the slave of the girl Dorothy, who rescued me from prison, replied the machine. Where she goes I will go. Oh, I am going with my friends, of course," said Dorothy quickly. I wouldn't miss the fun for anything. Will you go too, Bellina? Oh, to be sure," said Bellina in careless tone. She was smoothing down the feathers of her back and not paying much attention. Heat is just in her line," remarked the Scarecrow. If she is nicely roasted, she will be better than ever. Then," said Ozma, "we will arrange to start for the Kingdom of the Gnomes at daybreak tomorrow." And in the meantime, we will rest and prepare ourselves for the journey. Although Princess Langwider did not again appear to her guests, the palace servants waited upon the strangers from Oz and did everything in their power to make the party comfortable. There were many vacant rooms at their disposal, and the brave army of twenty-seven was easily provided for and liberally feasted. The cowardly lion and the hungry tiger were unharnessed from the chariot and allowed to roam at will throughout the palace, where they nearly frightened the servants into fits, although they did no harm at all. At one time Dorothy found the little maid Nanda crouching in terror in a corner, with the hungry tiger standing before her. "'You certainly look delicious,' the beast was saying. "'Will you kindly give me permission to eat you?' "'No, no, no!' cried the maiden reply. "'Then?' said the tiger, yawning frightfully. Please get me about thirty pounds of tenderloin steak, cooked rare, with a peck of boiled potatoes on the side, and five gallons of ice cream for dessert. I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can, said Nanda, and she ran away as fast as she could go. Are you so very hungry? asked Dorothy in wonder. You can hardly imagine the size of my appetite, replied the tiger, sadly. It seems to fill my whole body, from the end of my throat to the tip of my tail. I'm very sure the appetite doesn't fit me, and it's too large for the size of my body. Some day, when I meet a dentist with a pair of forceps, I'm going to have it pulled. What, your tooth? asked Dorothy. No, my appetite said the hungry tiger. The little girl spent most of the afternoon talking with the scarecrow and the tin woodman, who related to her all that had taken place in the land of Oz since Dorothy had left it. She was much interested in the story of Ozma, who had been, when a baby, stolen by a wicked old witch and transformed into a boy. She did not know that she had ever been a girl until she was restored to her natural form by a kind sorceress. Then it was found that she was the only child of the former ruler of Oz, and was entitled to rule in his place. Ozma had many adventures, however, before she regained her father's throne, and in these she was accompanied by a pumpkin-headed man, a highly magnified and thoroughly educated Wogglebug, and a wonderful sawhorse, 
that had been brought to life by means of a magic powder. The scarecrow and the tin woodman had also assisted her, but the cowardly lion, who ruled the great forest as the king of the beasts, knew nothing of Ozma until after she became the reigning princess of Oz. Then he journeyed to the Emerald City to see her, and on hearing she was about to visit the land of Ev to set free the royal family of that country, the cowardly lion begged to go with her, and brought along his friend the hungry tiger as well. Having heard this story, Dorothy related to them her own adventures, and then went out with her friends to find the sawhorse which Ozma had caused to be shod with plates of gold, so that his legs would not wear out. They came upon the sawhorse standing motionless beside the garden gate, but when Dorothy was introduced to him he bowed politely and blinked his eyes, which were knots of wood, and wagged his tail, which was only the branch of a tree. "'What a remarkable thing to be alive!' exclaimed Dorothy. "'I quite agree with you,' replied the sawhorse in a rough but not unpleasant voice. "'A creature like me has no business to live, as we all know, but it was the magic powder that did it, so I cannot justly be blamed.' "'Of course not,' said Dorothy. "'And you seem to be of some use, "'cause I noticed the scarecrow riding upon your back.' "'Oh, yes, I'm of use,' returned the sawhorse. "'And I never tire, never have to be fed or cared for in any way.' "'Are you intelligent?' asked the girl. "'Not very,' said the creature. "'It would be foolish to waste intelligence on a common sawhorse "'when so many professors need it. But I know enough to obey my masters, and to gee it up, or woe, when I'm told to, so I'm pretty well satisfied. That night Dorothy slept in a pleasant little bedchamber next to that occupied by Ozma of Oz, and Bellina perched upon the foot of the bed and tucked her head under her wing and slept as soundly in that position, as did Dorothy upon her soft cushions. But before daybreak every one was awake and stirring, and soon the adventurers were eating a hasty breakfast in the great dining-room of the palace. Ozma sat at the head of a long table on a raised platform with Dorothy on her right hand and the Scarecrow on her left. The Scarecrow did not eat, of course, but Ozma placed him near her so that she might ask his advice about the journey while she ate. Lower down the table were the twenty-seven warriors of Oz, and at the end of the room the lion and the tiger were eating out of a kettle that had been placed upon the floor, while Billina fluttered around to pick up any scraps that might be scattered. It did not take long to finish the meal, and then the lion and the tiger were harnessed to the chariot, and the party was ready to start for the Gnome King's palace. First rode Ozma with Dorothy beside her in the golden chariot, and holding Bellina fast in her arms. Then came the scarecrow on the sawhorse, with the tin woodman and Tick-Tock marching side by side just behind him. After these tramped the army, looking brave and handsome in their splendid uniforms. The generals commanded the colonels, and the colonels commanded the majors, and the majors commanded the captains, and the captains commanded the private, who marched with an air of proud importance because it required so many officers to give him his orders. And so... The magnificent procession left the palace and started along the road just as day was breaking, and by the time the sun came out, they had made good progress toward the valley that led to the Gnome King's domain. End chapter 9